Okay, thank you for your patience, everyone. Uh, we can go ahead and begin. I want to thank you all for taking the time to attend our webinar, Introduction to TR Multi-Coex Series. Uh, we hope you'll find today's 20-minute session helpful in understanding the benefits that a multi-coax solution can bring into your system design. I did want to just cover a bit of housekeeping. Uh, we have all attendees on mute, so please submit your questions via the question box or to info at ardenconcepts.com. Uh, due to the short nature of today's webinar, uh, we'll have an app engineer follow up with you uh, to address your questions after the close of the session. Also, we've uploaded a TR multi-coax series data sheet that you can download at any time uh, from the handout section of the panel. We've also included our CA series connectors catalog and our SK series sockets catalog to the handout section. So should you be interested in other product solutions, uh, please feel free to download those as well. Lastly, we're aware that many of you are taking time from work right now, so we'll do our best to keep this session to the time allotted. So with that said, uh, my name is Nat Stevens. I'm the marketing manager here at Arden Concepts. I'll be your presenter today. Our agenda for today's 20-minute session is a brief company profile about Arden Concepts, a review of the current landscape of surface mount connectors and individual connectors like SMAs, SMPs, WSMPs, and what we'll take a look at is uh, the assembly technology of those different surface mount components, as well as field replaceable components that go on your PCBs. We'll also look a little bit at the connector technology that exists today in the landscape. Uh, so threaded SMAs, SMKs, SMB connectors, as well as SMP or GPPO push-on style connectors. And we'll look at some of the issues that, that engineers are facing when using those type of connectors. We'll then talk about TR multi-coax series and introduce the product and understand why a multi-coax connector can be beneficial uh, as opposed to those individual surface mount connectors and a brief review of what was covered. So all in all, we're expecting about 20 minutes. So a brief company profile about Arden Concepts. We're a leading designer and manufacturer of high performance multi-coax and coaxial assemblies, connectors, and sockets used in the development of next generation semiconductors and electronic systems. Our core technology that we focus on our IP is the smallest, fastest, most electrically efficient compression mount connector technology worldwide. So as data rates are increasing and data rates are, uh, requirements are increasing and device and systems shrink, Arden's products deliver superior signal integrity in a dense footprint that can be reusable across programs to maximize cost savings. So our four product families are our TR series multi-coax, which we'll take a look at today, our CA series connectors, SK series high performance sockets, and our ICFP, uh, integrated circuit footprint probe technology. And so we'll take a look at those today. And if you would like to learn about those other technologies, uh, feel free to reach out to us at info at .com or to download the catalogs in the panel. All of the products we'll talk about, and especially Arden's products today in the TR Multi-Coax series, we'll use one of Arden's two uh, patented contact series, our Spring Probe patented contact or our Connectar patented uh, contact. Uh, our spring probe is that uh, top contact there, which looks like a, a, a coiled spring. And when many people look at that, they think it would behave like an inductor. But in fact, what happens is that when the springs are compressed in system, uh, they short on one another. The coil slides and shorts to behave like a solid contact element. And this provides an extremely short electrical uh, length and extremely uh, uh, high uh, frequency contact. The Connectar series below that is our stamped ladder contact. That's actually a, an automation loaded contact that goes into our insulators and sockets and, and connectors. Uh, that follows the same premise, which actually those coils and ladders twist and make a short to act like a solid contact element. Uh, so when you're discussing con uh, applications with Arden, we'll help you choose the right contact set for your application. So with that said, let's take a look at the current landscape of individual connectors as they exist today. Uh, when trying to take signals off of your printed circuit board and out to instrumentation or between boards. Typically, there are four common styles, uh, SMC or surface mount components, field replaceable connectors, so the surface mount comp components are traditionally soldered to the board, whereas the field replaceable connectors may be screwed down or, or mounted some other way. Uh, and then looking at the connector styles, there's SMA style threaded connectors, or you may have an SMP style push-on or snap-in connector. So understanding the SMC uh, and issues with the SMC assembly technology, um, there's some issues that engineers commonly run into in this, in this case. Uh, the first is uh, broken or poor solder joints. 
so this can happen for a lot of reasons. Cracking due to age of environment, fatigue from mating and demating the connector. Uh, it may just be bad quality from production. It may be that when it was initially soldered to the board, there was an issue with solder and uh, there was soldered debris or, or something in that, in that realm that's causing signal issues. Uh, also, with solder down connections, they're costly leave behinds. So when we look at a solder down component, if you had a board that had four or five revisions to it, every time you laid out maybe 10 or 20 or 50 of those solder down connectors to the board, you're essentially losing those with every board revision. So it's a sunk cost. Um, and for example, on customer evaluation boards, oftentimes they'll send out a board with five to 20 of those solder down connections, and those may never come back from the customer. So again, sunk cost in these, in these surface mount components. So what about issues with assembly technology for field replaceable connectors? And these are tr traditionally, as we mentioned, either edge launch or, or straight on the surface vertical launch um, mounted connectors that can be screwed down to the PCB. Uh, first, first issue here, this requires hardware. So what that means is you have to find a tool, whether you're in the lab or whether you're producing evaluation boards, you have to find a tool to assemble these, these connectors to the board. They carry a large footprint. So in order to get that, those tools in and that hardware in to ratchet the uh, connector on or to screw a connector and cable onto the edge launch, um, you're required to have space in between those. And so they can t traditionally take up a large footprint on your PCB, meaning bigger circuit boards or less room for other components on those circuit, uh, circuit uh, printed circuit boards. They're traditionally more expensive than those solder down surface mount components. So when you're talking about individual connectors, we've heard that they can range anywhere from uh, 10 to $50, depending on the speed and frequency and type of connector, and sometimes even more. It's easy for someone to damage a connector upon installation. So as you're trying to align the, uh, the center pin to that trace that you're, that you're looking to align it to, you can see in the picture here, we have a misalignment. Uh, you can also push up that center pin when you're mounting those connectors to the board, uh, which can cause damage to the connector and, and cause issues with signal integrity. So next we'd look at issues with connector technology itself. Uh, in this case, we're talking about SMA style threaded connectors. And the first thing you look at is pin to plug wear. So it's inherent in the design that as you're mounting and demounting connectors to these surface mount SMA, SMA style connectors, um, you'll have some issue with plug wear. So we've heard that an average insertion life, life is somewhere around 500 cycles. Uh, with higher frequency, you're gonna have a lower number of cycles there because there's traditionally a, a smaller center pin that's easily damaged. Um, you need tools. So with SMA style connectors, there's a large pitch between connector to connector and over torquing of those, those connectors can cause damage to that center pin. The time to attach. So a lot of test engineers have come to us and this has been a, a major gripe of theirs is, you know, it takes a lot of time to connect 10, 15, 20, 100 connectors over and over again. And, and time is money in the lab and time is, is something that can't be afforded to, uh, to have wasted. Also, intermatability can introduce problems. So if you have a poor SMA on the board, a, a lower quality SMA, uh, because your program manager is looking to reduce costs and you're mating up with a high quality 2.92 millimeter cable connector, um, there's issues with threading there and issues with mateability, and that can cause problems with signal integrity. Lastly, issues with connector technology for push-on and snap-in connectors. So this might be an SMP or a WSMP, for example, or perhaps a GPPO. So again, you're, you're, you're having issues with that pin to plug wear inherent in the design. When you're mating and demating those connectors over and over again, it's gonna wear those, those plugs. Uh, in this case, these, these snapping connectors traditionally have an insertion life of about 100 cycles. And again, it's true that with a higher frequency and lower, uh, you'll have a lower cycle count there uh, with those connectors. There's per performance degradation over cycles. And so this is a really important um, thing to note when working in systems with these individual snap-in connectors is that whenever there's signal degradation, an engineer has to go in and de debug where in the system there's, there's that loss, where that's coming from. And that's a tedious and timely process. And so with a connector like a snap-in connector, it's sometimes difficult to understand where that loss is coming from. So for example, a WSMP has probably about 10 cycles and when you need to replace it, you need to replace both the connector and the receptacle. Furthermore, there's jack to plug misalignment. So this can severely reduce the, uh, the life cycle and performance of these type of connectors just by the snap-in effect and, and the alignment of them. And it requires significant force to mate. So um, some of the engineers in the lab here who have worked at these 
uh, often complain about the calluses they get on their hands from mating and demating these snap-in style connectors because they're often uh, pretty difficult to mate and demate. So to alleviate these common issues, Ardent introduced uh, the TR multi-coax connector. And TR addresses the need that system designers have to get high-speed signals off their printed circuit boards and connected to other boards or out to instrumentation without the issues that are inherent with soldering or mounting individual surface mount connectors to your boards uh, that we just discussed. So TR replaces those SMAs and SMPs with a single multi-coax connector that takes multiple high-frequency signals off the board uh, and delivers exceptional signal integrity out past 70 gigahertz. So TR's compression mount, which means there's nothing to solder down to your boards, which makes it easier to use has more repeatable performance, mechanical and electrical, and the product is 100% reusable across boards and across programs. Uh, our TR comes standard with thumb screws, uh, which saves even more time, eliminating the need for any additional tools during the installation process. So here's a, an example installation of the TR multi-coax connector. Uh, it simply mates uh, to a footprint a PCB symbol on the board, uh, using two thumb screws, and it has dowels for alignment to ensure that you're aligning the connector properly with the board for no misalignment issues. So it's a very quick and easy process to connect multiple signals to a board, be it 8, 16, 24 channels in a very, very, very small footprint. TR comes in a variety of mounting configurations. So we understand the constraints that engineers have in different applications, and we've designed TR in a multitude of ways to ensure that we can provide a solution for their application. Our standard version is a straight mount connector, which mounts vertically to the board and straight to that footprint. Uh, it comes in a variety of four, eight, 12, 16, and 24 channel configurations with cable lengths of your choice and connector types standard are SMA, SMK, 2.92, and V or 1.85 connectors. Uh, however, we are, we are cable agnostic and can offer a variety of, of cables and connectors for your application. We offer a right angle version. So we understand that oftentimes engineers are trying to escape at a very uh, low angle to escape under a heat shroud and out to instrumentation, for example, or maybe coming off the bottom side of the PCB and, uh, and, and need to escape at a very tight tolerance uh, right angle. So our right angle version allows you to do that. A loopback version. So if you're doing TX and RX testing and you're trying to connect those lines, we have a version that allows you to connect channel to channel TX, RX. TR to TR. So using the, the Ardent interface and TR interface on either end to connect between boards, for example. We have a quick latch version. So instead of using mounting hardware like screws or thumb screws, we can actually have you just put slots on either side of the footprint and quick connect uh, with no tools required and no, no hardware or threading to the PCB. Blind mate or test head interface. So if you're looking to do a, an internal test setup and you need to connect and disconnect multiple channels quickly, we can have self-aligning blind mate test head interfaces. And our leapfrog version, which basically allows you to escape more channels at a right angle over the existing right angle TR connector. So one thing to note before we look at electrical performance is understanding that TR connects to an ENIG or ENIPIG uh, printed circuit board symbol, or as we call it, a footprint on the board. And so that's uh, electrolyst nickel immersion gold or electrolyst nickel uh, immersion palladium immersion gold footprint symbol. So what that means is there's no soldered components and nothing to solder down beyond uh, to, the, to the PCB itself. All you're doing is connecting that multi-coax connector. Many other connectors use some type of receptacle on the board which can lead to all hosts of issues similar to what we looked at previously with surface mount components, bad solder joints, connector wear, uh, mate and demate issues are just uh, a few to name. So look at the performance of a TR multi-coax connector as it may really relate to a um, surface mount component connector. In this case, we're looking at the insertion loss for our standard TR multi-coax connector. The measurement here include the TR interface and a three, inch, uh, three inches of cable with a 1.85 connector on it. So this measurement is showing the TR connector itself, its interface, three inches of cable, and a 1.85 connector. You can see here that the minus one DP point is at 27 gigahertz. The minus 2.5 uh, 
uh, dB point is at 67 and a half gigahertz. So well under three, uh, well under three dB of loss out to 70. And there's no resonances throughout the, the frequency range. A very clean signal integrity. Return loss is gonna tell a similar story. Your minus 17 dB uh, point, uh, the max return loss occurs at 34 gigahertz and, is, uh, and it's better than minus 17 dB throughout that 70 gigahertz range. Um, and so again, you know, uh, a, a very clean signal and return loss signal through the TR multi coax connector. Crosstalk, not to sound like a broken record, but again, a very clean crosstalk throughout our connector. This is actually showing transmi uh, transmission measurement of two coaxial channels spaced 1,000 mils apart. So we talked a lot about repeatability when we were looking at the individual surface mount connectors and issues with mating and demating and threading and connector wear. Well, the TR multi coax connector is rated to 1,000 mechanical cycles, which means you could mount the TR to the board and demount it 1,000 times without any signal degradation. In this case, we're looking at repeatability where we have insertion loss and we're measuring 56 different channels, so four different channels on 14 different TR assemblies. Uh, and, uh, and so what we're showing here is that there's no signal difference between those 56 different channels when mating. Repeatability of a single channel in insertion loss over 1,000 cycles. So we took a measurement at 150, 100, 500, and 1,000 cycles, and you can see that the signal integrity through that, the insertion loss through that connector is going to be uh, unchanged uh, of note. Looking again at repeatability, we ran the same measurements for return loss, and again, you're going to see no signal difference between uh, zero in a thousand cycles and across channels throughout those TR assemblies. So in summary, TR multi coax delivers superior signal integrity up to 70 gigahertz and beyond. So our insertion loss is minus 3 dB up to 70 gigahertz, return loss minus 15 dB out to 70 gigahertz, and far end uh, cross dock never exceeds the uh, minus 80 dB floor to 70 gigahertz. It's a compression mount solution, which guarantees long-term electrical repeatability of the connector. So the device can be used to up to 1,000 mechanical cycles, thanks to the unique geometry of Arden's uh, redundant contact technology. It's a solderless system, so it eliminates signal distortion from solder, ensuring clean signal integrity. So solder joints can create more discontinuities between signal transmission, which can ultimately reduce signal integrity. Significant space savings over the surface mount uh, connectors. So a surface mount solder down SMA jack connector can have um, bodies as large as 0.250 or 6.35 millimeters uh, squared, whereas the TR can fit uh, 16 channels in what would probably be about four to six surface mount uh, component channels. Quick connection of multiple signals to the PCB. So you don't have to deal with threading and de-threading or snapping in multiple different individual connectors. It's with uh, potentially two screws, two thumb screws, connecting up to 24, 16 or 24 channels uh, to your board very, very quickly. The ability to get closer to the device under test. So because you're in a denser footprint, you can put that footprint much closer to the device you're testing, reducing the, the, the trace length uh, that you need on that PCB and, and signal discontinuity and reusability across boards and across programs, leading to exponential cost savings. And this is an important one. With the TR device, all that's needed is a footprint to be designed into the PCB. So that footprint symbol can be placed in a library uh, of, your, of your board fab or your board designer, and they can pull that footprint out and, and slap it anywhere they want on the PCB, and they can put as many of them as they want on the PCB without a need for a solder down receptacle. So you could place 20 footprints on your board and move one TR connector from, from footprint to footprint. Uh, the cost savings of TR grows drastically when the following is considered. Less footprints in area to achieve the same signal uh, density reduces PCB design time. There's no costly lead behind. And inherently, smaller PCBs with less items are less expensive. So quick summary of Arden concepts. Signal integrity is our passion. We are passionate about high performance. We're dedicated to improving data rates of even the most advanced programs and systems and we care about bandwidth 
and we provide measured data to back it up, not simulated, but all of our data is measured data. Um, when we say we're passionate about signal integrity and improving data rates, what that means is while today our TR goes up to 70 gigahertz, uh, we are constantly road mapping to 110 gigahertz and how we can make our TR be ready for the next generation of system design. Compression mount technology. All of our products are based on compression mount, which enables a more reliably, a more, excuse me, reliable and electrically repeatable performance over time and across programs. So our compression products allow our customers to be agile and changing their designs without scrapping entire projects and printed circuit boards. Uh, and those, those component, components that are then soldered to those boards. So this leads to enhanced flexibility and cost savings. Performance. Uh, proven app, we, 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 our applications and our products are proven across applications with over now 15 years of field use for test and measurement and OEM interconnects. We carry an IP portfolio of, of over 20 patents, uh, all in the realm of compliant uh, electrical contacts uh, for high-speed data rates. Our products are designed into applications and systems at the largest semiconductor companies worldwide, as well as communications companies, um, test and measurement companies, and military aerospace applications. And we're leading the charge in pushing connector bandwidth ba uh, boundaries through continued engineering and IP development. So we're constantly road mapping at what the market may require for bandwidth two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. So we'll be a reliable partner moving forward. With that said, we've allotted the time for today's session. As I mentioned, please submit any questions you may have to the questions box here in the, di in, in the GoToMeeting dialog or to info at ardenconcepts.com and an applications engineer will follow up with you on those questions. Uh, please feel free again to download the catalogs um, that are located in that GoToMeeting panel, log, or panel excuse me, to learn more about Arden programs. And we look forward to having you join us for the next webinar. Thanks and have a great day.